Right, very good afternoon to everybody. Um, thanks for being here, and I know it's the graveyard session at this time of the day. It's nearly weekend, so, but I think let's just be excited. It's quite an amazing um, thing which is happening here. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe let's quickly go to the, the previous slide, the first slide. Hi, uh, Magdalena Gaufler. She is from the University of Upper Austria, Applied University of, of Technology. And yeah, welcome to you. Um, we are really glad that you could uh, stand in for uh, Stefan Zunzenauer at such short notice. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Hi, everybody. Great. All right, so uh, we are really pleased to announce that as was alluded in the, not the previous one, the presentation before that. Um, Professor Tsela said that as of 2023, we'll be hosting a, a course called the International Foundation Program, the IFP, in Swakopmund, and it will, so that is, that is to us very good news. We'll talk about that just now. It was a it was a collaboration which started off around about 2020 when the uh, University of Applied Science Upper Austria entered into a, an agreement with the private school Swakopmund. And so it was, a, it was a bilateral agreement with benefits, I think, to both. On the one hand, we would have this, this beautiful international um, contact with the university Whereas before we were working and fighting against um, UniAssist, which was also alluded to by Prof. Tseller just now, and now all of a sudden we had people, we had humans on the other side of our, our emails and on the other side of really of the big pond of the, of the ocean. And we thought that this was, this was an absolute opportunity which we didn't want to forego. And we, maybe next slide quickly. And, and that idea was started by one of, um, and, and the next slide maybe, um, a young lady, uh, Kara Kirchhoff. Um, if you look on the top left hand corner, uh, that was little Kara, she was uh, one of our students. Uh, that must have been around about 2000 or 2002 in, in that area. And there's the entire school, as you can see, uh, with a blue um, arrow pointing to, to Kara. Kara is now um, something like a, what we would call a faculty officer, and she works in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, and she gives us amazing service. So we do not go through UniAssist, we go through Kara Assist, and Kara assists. That's it. And we were, yeah. So that is one of the most amazing things um, that, that happened to us um, in terms of connection with universities. Uh, maybe, yeah, and Magdalena, if you would like to introduce um, yourself and also your colleague, Stefan. Yes, so first of all, thank you very much for having me. My name is Magdalena Kufla. I work for the International Foundation Program at the University of Applied Sciences of Austria, or short FH. And yeah, I'm responsible for the foundation program, and this is actually my boss, Stefan Zunzena. He is the head of studies of this program and also of our Center of Lifelong Learning, which is a faculty that we have. Exactly. So, we are at the moment working together with um, Professor Zunzena, as well as with Kara, on the existing international foundation program. and. We are very excited about that. So, because as of next year, and maybe you can just skip the next um, slide, as of next year, this program will be based in Swakopmund as of January 2023. Um, it will be a course run in German, although in the following year there will be an English stream available, and it will be do done through team teaching. It will be um, 
Austrian professors and there will be teachers from our school, postgraduate uh, teachers like um, for instance our good teacher over here, um, Didi, you will be uh, teaching in there but I think also um, a few others will also be teaching um, in there. So the tuition will come from Austria and we will be working through the practical applications with the students. So there will be theoretical parts per week, but then also um, practical parts. Good, so can I move on with that slide? Yes, please. That's okay with you? Okay, perfect. Good, so the first question that most of you will have is who can participate? So you can participate in this program if you are looking for a preparation program that's taught in German. It's, a, as already said, a preparation program that prepares you for your studies in Austria or in general in Europe. Um, if you do not meet the entrance requirements uh, for studying here or again in Europe in general, or if you want to fresh up your knowledge before coming to Austria, because it is, as already said, a preparation program and prepares you and so that, so that you are well prepared for, for your bachelor's studies and also for your master's studies if you want to do so. Good, then um, just in a nutshell for all of you, what is the International Foundation Program? Um, it's generally, again, a preparation program that you do before your bachelor's studies. It's a two semester program. It covers uh, courses such as maths, um, physics, applied informatics, English, German as a foreign language, and intercultural competences. And maybe also a few more words on the curriculum, just a very basic, um, you will have term one and term two, um, term one from January to May, and then term two from May to September. Um, basically, you will have um, core subjects and electives. Um, in the first semester, it will be core subjects, so you will have mathematics, physics, intercultural skills, and English and German. For mathematics and physics, it's very important to know that those courses will be divided into lecture and exercise. So lecture basically means that you will have a theoretical class um, where you learn all the things, and then in the exercise, you put it into practice, basically. So this goes for mathematics and for physics. Um, intercultural skills, um, English and German uh, um, are like seminars. Then for term two, you will have uh, mathematics two and English and German again as four um, subjects, again, um, lecture, exercise and seminar, and then um, there will be electives. So depending on what you would like to study after the uh, foundation program, you choose um, the, yeah, the course that you need or that is mandatory. So for example, physics two is mandatory for everyone who is interested in engineering, so electrical engineering, um, and also for everybody who's interested in IT. And then we have applied informatics. This is recommended, not necessarily mandatory, but definitely highly recommended for everyone who is into IT and engineering again. And then there will be um, one um, course available that the PSS does, uh, so in Namibia, uh, and this is for economics and management. Right, so the first trimester, number one, for next year, language of tuition, German. First semester, January to May, second semester, May to September, and then with the option of an entry into um, the uh, Upper Austria uh, Applied University of Technology in October. So. There's no wasting of time. It is actually just getting straight into, um, obviously if you pass, um, straight into that university. Right, so the program costs, you would ask what that is. That's more or less 50,000 uh, Namibia dollars, um, and it excludes accommodation and living costs. Now if you take that, if you take that, amount, it's in all probability less than your school fees in a, in a, in a private school. And if you take the, the university tuition costs of Austria, they will be more or less in line with what Stellenbosch and UCT are going to be asking you. So 
even though you are paying in euros, it'll be more or less in that line. So the, de uh, the degree that you'll be getting, or the qualification, is that a uh, certificate from the University of Applied Science and confirming the completion of a pre-university qualification course. Exactly, and then a few more words um, on the application and on the deadline. So the application deadline is generally you can register from July to December via email. Just use the email here. Um, the required documents that are needed are school leaving certificates, then certificates from the highest educational level that you have. So diplomas, transcripts, all of that is important. Um, and then letter of motivation and CV. So you send all those documents. And then the application procedure generally is that um, yeah, you apply by email with, uh, together with an official application form that will be available soon. And then um, the prerequisite will be, will be checked if you fulfill the requirements for doing this program. And then you will be invited for the interview. Then you can start. So a question might arise now, why, you know, why do we go to all this trouble of, of offering a course like this in Namibia. So one of my no-brainer answers would be that it is it will be much more cost efficient than if you go over to Austria. Um, in one of the previous presentations, the um, profit seller more or less said what it would cost. Just accommodation and and also um, your food. And if you transfer that, or if you calculate that into Namibia dollars, it'll cost you on about 15, 15,000 a month. So if you want to do this bridging course, if you have to stay in Swakop, and if you have to eat in Swakop, and be taught here in Swakop, it's really a no-brainer. You'd be able to afford much, much more for 15 grand per month. In operability, you'd be able to cut that down to, to a third, or if you really want to live well, to about half that cost. So that's, that's why that, um, we suggested that. So um, without any risks, one would be able to come here, see whether you can cope with the material, um, have teachers that understand you, and, and be less immersed in, in this, um, environment and then after you've done that then obviously you've got the theory um, more or less sorted and you can then go to Austria in that October so if you want to apply contact us at you got that one on the board um, email address ifp um, dash F-H-O-O-E Fachhochschule Oberösterreich at pss.com.na It's one of our PSS email addresses. It'll land directly in there and we will, um, we will answer your, your questions promptly. And if we don't know, we will pass that on to Magdalena O'Kara or Stefan. Um, Magdalena, anything else that you would like to add or say? No, thank you. That would be everything from my side. If there are any questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask. I'm still here. Hi, uh, Yes. Just a question. Are there any exams? Will it just be attempts or will there be exams and evaluation at the end of the course? Um, will it be, Magdalena, what is your, um, is it continuous assessment or is it an examination at the end of per semester. I mean, I I was not fully um, in this into this project basically, so I was not fully um, like working in this project. So I don't know one hundred percent. But based on what we do now in the IFP, and I guess that it will be very very similar. Um, we have um, exams at the end of the uh, semester but also in between. So there will be like a midterm and then a final exam. Um, so I'm pretty sure that it will be like this as well, but I would have to um, ask um, Stefan Sutsnauer to from more like 
100% sure information, but I'm pretty sure that um, it will be done like this. Um, I, I agree with you. I think um, Stefan Sedek will be exactly like the one that is run yeah, in Austria. That's what I, I thought. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Um, any other questions? Yes. Um, I just wanted to ask you to maybe run through it again, because from what I understand is that um, you, you register and you maybe do your course here in Swakov, and then from Swakov, once, once you are um, certified, you then go to Austin. That, that's right. Um, this is um, merely a bridging course. That is because if you have an AS qualification, um, school leaving certificate, you will not be able to go and study directly in Germany or in Austria or in, in Europe. Um, all the universities require a bridging course. So you can, and, and this bridging course, um, instead of going over to Germany or going to Austria and having to pay quite a lot for a bridging course and to go and do it, you do it here. So the bridging course is done here, but then your ultimate goal is to go and study in Europe and in Austria. And just by the way, um, having said that, uh, Magdalena is maybe you can just tell us how many um, how many universities does um, does your university have a partnership agreement with? More or um, how many? I cannot say. There are a lot of universities that you can you can go to. You can go on um, like Erasmus if you want that. There are many many um, partner universities, not just in Europe, worldwide. Um, and you can do that both in bachelor and in master studies, so everything is um, possible and the university is very encouraging as far as international experience is concerned, so um, you can go everywhere where you want, basically. Why, why I was um, asking this particular, and I'm coming to your question just now, why I was asking this particular question is, um, once you're in, in this university, it's not going to be like a marriage that, you know, for the rest of your life you are going to be married to this university. You can, after a, a one or two or three or how many semesters, actually go to another university for a semester to go and, and um, check it out and to um, augment what you have studied. Because they have international recognition agreements. And I believe, if I can recall your prospectus, that there are 200 or 600 universities worldwide with whom you have cooperation agreements. I'm not quite, it was in the hundreds. Yes, it's, it's, there, there are more and more. That's why I cannot give you a concrete number, but there are many, like for example, in Thailand, the United States. So, yeah, basically, I think I would say almost in, in, in every, every country. And as, as you said, you can um, study there as well and then get your qualification that you have completed at our university recognized as well. Yes. Um, you had another question before I'm going to go over to Ms. Liti. Um, I just want to ask again, so does that then mean that the studying would have to be done online or do they have facilities here? Um, it's going to be a, um, a dual kind of a course. On the one hand, it'll the professors will be um, online, but we will be sitting in a, in a group, um, working in a group, and then there will be qualified or highly qualified facilitators, uh, teachers with um, postgrad um, qualifications, um, assisting with the practical application. And if you really don't understand them, they will be able to uh, to explain. Okay. Yes, Ms. Uh, this qualification will it be? Um, I hope you to get into other European universities as a bridging course as well. Yeah, she mentioned that briefly as well, just now. Yeah, but it, she said they universities, but what about other European universities? Um, is there, Magdalena, is there something that you'd be able to tell us about that? This bridging course, does that um, allow entry into another university, like for instance the Fachhochschule Wien, or, um, or München or something like that? Okay, um, yeah, generally um, the, we cannot guarantee, so that's very, very important. In the first place to know, um, every university that offers a bridging course can never guarantee that another university will accept this bridging course. 
But, and that's very important, we have had quite a few students who went to another university and they had no problems with our certificate. So generally, I would say that it always depends on the university. Um, usually there are no problems, but, and yeah, that has to be considered, um, there are universities that do not accept this. So that's, um, I have to, we have to be honest here, um, that can happen. But from our experience so far, um, the universities and also other like Fachhochschulen or MBH, they're very um, open and um, will contact me or our department and ask, okay, what is this? And then it's usually fine, but yeah, we cannot guarantee. And in that case where it is not, where it is a no, you, uh, please help me if I'm wrong. Um, you would you would study a a semester or two semesters and and you could then migrate to any other European university. Am I more or less right? Exactly. So um, usually universities, once they get the qualification, they will review it and then they will say, okay, this matches our requirements. And if it does not match, they will um, tell the applicant, okay, you need either like this qualification or that exam at our university and things like that. So that's usually um, how, how it is done, at least in Austria, that's what I know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> passing the uh, foundation course, does it mean I will be accepted in, in, at the University of Upper Austria? Did you get that uh, question? Does that, passing this um, IFP, does that guarantee you entry into the Fachhochschule or Österreich? Um, yeah, so generally all our students apply to their program of choice. It's usually, so in the normal academic year, it would be in March, but I guess that in this case now it would, it's after the first semester, so whenever that is. Um, and then you apply, you go through the application procedure, and then the department decides um, if they accept you or not. Um, generally, if people are have good grades, perform well, there will never be any problems. So that's that's um, for sure. This is just for like um, cases where people don't take it seriously, which I don't hope. Um, then it could uh, could run into uh, difficulties with the acceptance. But generally, it should work out perfectly fine. Um, does it sometimes occur that where um, somebody? where some of the, the, the courses are oversubscribed. In other words, you might have uh, 60 places, but there are 120 applicants. And which ones would they then take of the IFP? Would they take the ones with the better marks, or is there such a, a discrimination being made, or a fair discrimination? Um, yeah, I understand the question. Um, generally, um, I mean, it depends on the departments. But usually, um, most of our students get accepted. I mean, there are study programs that are, yeah, that have a, receive a lot of applications, especially things like management are very popular at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it, it, you could run into troubles there, but that's very important. We inform the departments that the applicant comes from our program. So they know in advance that he or she um, is coming from our program. It's not to say that this is so that everything is set in stone and that people can relax and enjoy the year, uh, not at all, but um, they know. So usually the chances are very high, and as I already said, if people have good grades, perform well, there are usually um, no problems. It's not as, as competitive as most people maybe think is. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Um, how long would this um, bridge course go? How long is this bridge? Okay, that is from, from January until September. Yeah. Okay. And then October one starts with the in, in Austria. Yes. Um, I would like to um, the young gentleman, all of you sitting there. And what grade are you now? AS. Are you AS now? So you are interested to do this next year interested might be what are the chances that we can offer it in english next year yes um what uh, yeah that, that's a that's a very good question the the answer to that really is um i think the and please correct me magdalena if i'm wrong 
um, we asked about the English, and and the the answer to that was that the 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 German um, program is much more stable. They've they've really worked that out to a T. My guess is also that there will be more staff able to teach um, in German, um, and and that's why they wanted to start experimenting with that one um, first and. But then in our presentation, it said that um, they will be doing um, in 2024. If we see that there is enough interest, that we will be doing it. There you go. Second from the top, key facts, 2024 in English. Hatu, yeah. If the language of tuition is German, then a oh, number of possibilities. Firstly, the practicals could be in English. And secondly, would the university to consider writing exams in English? I mean, that would be accommodating the lack of teaching in German, but then would compensate in terms of practical tuition in English, as well as then a, um, the exams being written in English. Would the, that, does the university offer e English exams? Is possibly that. Magdalena, would you like to comment on that? Did you hear um, me? Can you maybe repeat the last part? I, I heard that it was about, about exams and the language that's used in the exam, but I could not understand the first part of the question. The, the first part would be that tuition by the professors would be in English. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in German, sorry. And, yeah, and yeah, that, in German, that yes. the Namibian assistance from the, um, the teachers would, could be in English or could be augmented in English, and that students mm -hmm. could then possibly write examinations in English? Um, I mean, I would have to ask, usually um, at our university, the language of tuition is also the language of the exam. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that most um, of the teachers will speak English, so they can help out in English. Whether or not they are able to actually do the exam in English, um, I am not 100% Sure, and as you already said, um, it's a lot easier um, to find stuff um, that teaches in German rather than in English, especially for um, subjects like mathematics and physics. It's pretty tough to find someone who who feels comfortable teaching that subject um, in English. Yeah. Thanks. Otto. Is, sorry, it's me again. <laughs> Is, that the, is, is, is the PSS the only external facility worldwide that offers this course outside of Austria? Do or other, other countries? Any other, other Austrian university offering? No, the same university offering the same course in Thailand. Uh, are you offering this course, this IFP, in another site or another country at the moment? or Non-European country. A non-European country? No, um, this is the first cooperation that we have. So right now, the International Foundation Program is only at our university here in Austria in Venice. This is our location. And the Namibia project is the first one of, yeah, of, of its kind. Um, and we do not, so far, have no other cooperations with any other countries or schools or whatever. Great, okay. okay. Any other question? For two marks, for three marks? <laughs> okay, for three marks. <laughs> Maybe you can just tell then that um, if it is a problem for you for the first year, we do offer bridging courses and A levels, and it could be a nice way to. Yeah. Um, other option to to um, to uh, to you gentlemen and a lady, one lady. Um, is that there are A-levels also at our school um, that one could actually then um, get also get some intensive um, German if you want to go and study in Germany or in um, in Austria. That, that's another option to go for. All right. Going, going, gone. Well, Delena, thanks so much for um, being with us and, and giving us some yeah. great information. And, and thanks to your university for... Uh, you know, just walking this this uh, down this path together with us, and give my best regards to Stefan. Thank you very much. Thank you, and have a good day. And yeah, if any questions come up, please feel free to to contact us, to contact me, the university, Cara, Stefan, anybody. Great stuff. We'll Thanks a lot. To, re to receive your your questions, feedback, whatever. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have Let's a good give a round of applause. Bye.